My goodness. All right. I'm going to go ahead and let everyone in. Hello, those of you who are logging in. We really appreciate you all joining us this evening. Um, I am going to go ahead and start a poll. So if you don't mind um, on your way in, just answering that so we can just get to know you all a little bit better in this super weird virtual setting. Uh, we want to be able to engage with you all as much as possible. So if you don't mind answering that poll for us. All right, I see a few folks already who have already submitted their application to UNC Charlotte. That is awesome. We love to see it. We love to hear it. And quite a few of you who have already visited campus. We are so happy to hear that. If you haven't, there are options for you to do a virtual campus tour. Um, we also have in-person tours that are happening now. Um, just in a little bit smaller groups as well as self-guided tours. So definitely check those out if you have not visited campus quite yet. And for those of you who are logging in now, thank you so much for joining us this evening. Um, if you don't mind answering the poll that we have up just so we can get to know you all just a little bit better. 22 people so far who have already visited campus or have already applied <laughs> for UNC Charlotte. We are so happy to hear that. All right, and we will just give it just about 30 more seconds or a minute um, just to let everyone else join in who is logging on. Um, but again, thank you all so much for being with us on a Monday evening. Got lots of folks here interested in the business honors program. We will be covering lots of information about that this evening. All right. Well, I think most folks who have logged in um, or who are going to log in have logged in at this point. So again, again, thank you so much for joining us this evening. Um, we are gonna be talking about all things honors. So we'll be uh, discussing the arts and architecture honors program, the business honors program, as well as the university honors program. Um, so just to introduce myself really quick, my name is Lauren Helms. I am an admissions recruiter here at UNC Charlotte and a graduate of the university. I work very closely with the honors college. So I'm here to host these wonderful people um, to tell you more about those programs. We do have a Q&A feature, um, so please do note that your question that you have may be answered during the duration of the presentation, um, but once we get towards the end, if you want to drop those questions in, we will have some time at the end for a short Q&A, um, so definitely feel free um, to drop those in there, and we will provide you with resources to ask any questions later on if you still have them. Um, so I will go ahead and pass it over to our panelists here uh, to get started. Excellent. Thanks, Lauren. We appreciate that. Uh, my name is Denise Lynch. I am the coordinator of programming for the Honors College. I also oversee the first year experience for the uh, University Honors Program. Hey, everyone. My name is Zach Lord. I am the assistant director of the Business Honors Program. Um, and I also uh, teach in the program as well. So if you're in the BHP, you'll have me for a few classes. Hello, everyone. My name is Dante Gilrivas. I am a fourth year architecture student, and I'm in the Arts and Architecture's Honors Program. Hi, everyone. My name is Lauren. I'm a member of UHP. Um, I am a junior, and I am a psychology and organizational communications double major. Hello, I'm Jennifer McLean, and I am a senior in the Business Honors Program. I'm majoring in management with a concentration in talent management. Excellent. And we are so excited to be here with you this evening to share a little bit about our three main programs that are available to incoming freshmen. 
Uh, but first, just to give you a little bit of understanding of the Honors College at UNC Charlotte, uh, we are basically the front door to all honors on campus. And uh, honors takes 30 different forms. Uh, three of those are programs that are available to incoming freshmen through uh, junior year. And um, then the remaining 27 programs are all uh, within the disciplines, more specialized. Um, and uh, those usually begin junior or possibly even just senior year. Uh, so you wouldn't have exposure or eligibility for any of those programs. Uh, the University Honors Program is the oldest and the largest honors program on campus. It is open to every single major that there is on campus. So regardless of what your major is or how many times you have changed your major, you can find a home within the University Honors Program. Uh, the Business Honors Program is geared for those of you who have a declared major in the College of Business uh, and likely and the same with the Arts and Architecture Honors Program. You have to have a declared major within the College of Arts and Architecture, as well as being accepted uh, by their specific programs after turning in a portfolio or audition or uh, whatever is required for that particular um, area that you are interested in studying. All right, uh, I was muted, sorry about that. All right, um, so why honors? You pro you're probably thinking, why should I be a part of an honors program? Um, and there are several reasons, and these are pretty similar across the board for all of our freshman programs. Um, we have smaller class sizes. So some, some of the classes that you will probably be in um, in college could be up to 100, 150 students. Um, all of our honors courses um, within all of our programs are pretty small. Um, so you're usually around 30 or fewer students. Uh, so some of them, you might even be in classes of like 15 students. So um, smaller class sizes is a big part of what makes honors. Uh, so that gives you more individualized attention um, from these dedicated faculty members that are teaching these, uh, these classes. Um, the courses are going to be experience-based. They're interactive learning opportunities. I know that for us within the business honors program, uh, my students play a very active role within the classroom, uh, so they're leading classroom discussions and I'm highly uh, turning it over to them most of the time to really engage in whatever topic we're talking about. Um, and then they're, they're doing a lot of, in all of the programs, they're doing projects um, rather than just listening to lectures and uh, taking tests and um, and in doing that, they're, they're doing projects with their peers uh, and things like that um, and engaging in that classroom discussion, which makes a really different learning environment. Uh, there's rigorous in-depth research and creative experiences as well. Um, one of the, the really awesome parts that you probably don't think of necessarily with it uh, when you think of honors is the community building aspect. Um, all of the programs are um, small enough for you to form really tight close-knit bonds with with peers and classmates um there's social events um, that the honors college hosts that are open to anyone in any of the programs um there's uh housing in levine hall uh, which is uh, the newest residence hall on campus so highly recommend trying to live there if um you're accepted into uh, one of the honors programs um, but there's fun lounges uh, and stuff like that. There's dedicated floors on um, each floor of uh, Levine, and some of those floors have uh, only honor students living in them. So you can live with other honor students, which is neat as well. Um, but uh, being in honors is really a great way to uh, just kind of um, easily make friends when you are jumping into college. So it's a great, um, great way uh, to be involved right when you step on onto campus. Um, we also have merit and associated, scholar, associated scholarships. So I know that we have some really awesome uh, scholarships uh, that you can apply for. Um, 
as a um, incoming freshman, um, I highly recommend you uh, coming to our session tomorrow. Um, let's see, what time is that session tomorrow? Tomorrow at five o'clock on Honors College Scholarships. Um, so you can hear about some of those top scholarships that we offer. Um, but then also there are some uh, departmental scholarships that you can apply for as upperclassmen as well. So I know that for um, business honors, we have a ton of different um, scholarship programs that our students can apply for just because they're in business honors. Um, and now these last two probably don't sound like really big perks right now to y'all, um, but our college students here uh, can probably attest to how big of a deal both of the, these two are. Um, the first one, probably a little bit less right now with a lot of the classes being digital, uh, but under normal circumstances, free printing is a huge thing, turning in papers that uh, might be 15 pages long, um, and uh, you're getting free printing for everything, um, and that's located in Dean Hall too. Uh, and then the big one is priority registration. You can uh, register for your classes before everyone else at the university. Um, and uh, just knowing that you're gonna get pretty much the perfect schedule every single semester is um, very, very nice. Um, you don't have to worry about trying to get into the classes or the sections of the class or the specific professor that you want. Um, so those are some of the perks of why you should be excited about applying to the Honors College. You're going to watch a little video and Actually, hold on one second. I think I forgot to click the hair sound button. Hold on one, one second. All right, that should fix it. And here we go. Hi, my name is Ben. I'm a freshman here at UNC Charlotte, pre-business major from Bear Delaware. So my typical day starts uh, by waking up here in Levine Hall. It's primarily honors housing. Since I'm an honors student, uh, some of my classes are actually in Levine Hall, so it's pretty simple. I just wake up, roll out of bed, uh, take the elevator down to my classroom, so I'm there in three minutes tops. Uh, it's really easy to talk to the professors. They're always available during their office hours, before class, after class. Um, and if there's not a time that you can meet with them, uh, they're more than happy to schedule a time outside of class and meet with them. Uh, all the professors that I've had, their main focus is student success. So I definitely don't feel like a number. They know my name, uh, they know my, my backstory, um, and they're really helpful in making sure that I succeed in the classroom. Time management is definitely huge, uh, so I like to chunk my time during, throughout the week, uh, nine to five, like a full-time job, uh, and then after five, that's when the college experience really gets exciting. So I usually, after five o'clock, uh, hop on uh, the bikes that Charlotte has through Charlotte Wheels. Uh, each student gets 60 free minutes a day. Just kind of go. Uh, I like to go on the Greenway. Uh, after the Greenway, uh, head over to Sobe to get something to eat. So after we get something to eat from Sovi, uh, we might head to the Union to catch a movie, um, or we might actually come back to Levine uh, and hang out in one of the lounges to play pool, uh, air hockey, or, or foosball. So being involved on the campus has affected me greatly. Uh, not only can I network with other people, but I can also network with uh, my professors and, and other faculty on campus uh, to really branch out uh, and to learn more about the community I'm in. Awesome. Um, I always feel like I have to put a little caveat in there that that video was created a couple of years ago because now with COVID restrictions, anytime you see a big group of people together, it just, it seems kind of weird. Um, but just wanted to let, uh, let you know that. Uh, also, before we jump into some of the specifics about the curricular expectations within these programs, um, I know we were talking about classes, smaller class sizes and um, being able to have interactive learning and that sort of thing. So I just also wanted to point out that over the course of this honors week, there are two different opportunities for you to visit and eavesdrop on a mock class. Uh, I will be um, conducting class tomorrow at three o'clock in the afternoon. And then on Wednesday, I believe is it at five, Zach? Uh, Zach will be conducting one of his classes as well. Um, so we invite you to join us for those. It should be a lot of fun. Um, okay, so speaking of class, 
Uh, we have um, a 20 credit hour requirement for graduating with university honors. Um, of those 20 credits, uh, it basically comes out to be about four classes, uh, not four, sorry, eight, four of which are required specific courses, uh, the ones that you see on the left-hand side of the graphic, and then the other four are electives, meaning they are still required, but you get to choose whichever uh, ones from a particular category you would like to take. Um, so on average, because you see there are eight classes that are required, if you are going to be on campus for four years, on average, all you need to do is take one honors class per semester and you'll be able to graduate with university honors. Um, the cool thing about that is that we also have some options for those of you who might have already um, might have already accumulated a lot of credits either through APs or through dual enrollment or maybe early college, middle college, those sorts of things. Uh, and we have a program that we refer to as advanced entry, which if you come in with 30 or more credit hours, then you would only need to take three of the four required elective classes. Uh, likewise, if you come in with 60 or more credit hours, then you are now reduced to only needing to take two of those four electives. Uh, if you notice on the graphic, there is a little notation that says at least two electives must be honors 3700. Uh, honors 3700 are what we call honors topics classes. And so if you come in through an advanced entry program that allows you to uh, waive some of your elective requirements, then you are still needing to be held uh, to taking at least two of the honors topics classes. Some of the other honors electives are what um, we were referring to earlier and what um, Zach had talked about with the honors section of a liberal studies. LBST stands for liberal studies, which is also the same thing as saying general education. So usually your first couple of years on campus all of those courses that are required for you to have a well-rounded education. Uh, those are the classes that tend to be a little bit larger because they are for first and second year students. Uh, and so those are the ones uh, that if you're taking an honor section of those classes, uh, then that double counts. So that counts toward honors and that also counts toward graduation. If you've already been given credit for a particular LBST, you don't have to take that again. You just move on and either take a different LBST honor section or you can rely on taking only the honors topics classes. It's a minimum of two, but you can take up to three or four of them. We just ask that you take those later in your career rather than early on. Um, the Honor 1700 uh, is your first semester class, uh, kind of a colloquium, a seminar class uh, to get you used to things. And then the 2301 Liberal Studies 2301 is the only Liberal Studies class that is required. Uh, the other two classes, 3790 and 3791, are not until your senior year when you're doing your senior capstone project. All right, so I'm going to talk a little bit about um, some of the stuff that we do with UHP um, outside of classes. Um, so each semester we do two service events. Um, typically, this is on hold this year just because of Corona and everything that's happening. But in the past, we've partnered with different organizations in Charlotte, such as like the Crisis Assistance Ministry, um, the Food Pantry. Um, we've done two service events each semester um, with those different organizations. Um, each semester, we also do one enrichment event. Typically, this will be something that's on campus um, that we can attend. So in the past, I've gone to a lot of the different arts productions that we've done, so different things that the theater has put on. This semester, we're doing a lot of online, um, different Zoom enrichment events. So we've had different speakers come in, talk to everybody, um, and then lead a discussion on different topics that um, they're experts about. And then we also do two social events this semester. These are just fun events for everyone to get to know each other. Um, in the past, we've done things like movie night, game night, um, an ice cream social. Um, socials have been 
um, half online, half in person, some small in person ones this semester, but our online socials have been super fun. We've done online speed friending, online trivia, different things like that. Um, so those are our different requirements to meet each semester. They're just a great way to help build community, to get to know each other and to get involved on campus and in the Charlotte community. Um, and they're always super fun and super easy to get all your requirements done. Hello everyone, my name is Jennifer McLean. Again, I am a senior in the Business Honors Program. So our program consists of 30 hours. Um, we are a program that focuses majorly on business. So if you're not a business major, you can't be in Business Honors. And I just want to add that since you're in the Honors Program, that does not mean that you have extra classes. A lot of our classes are classes that a normal business major would take. However, we take the honors section of that. So it's a smaller class of 30 people or less. And this is really nice because it gives you a chance to get to know your peers better, um, work together and get to know each other. It truly is a family and we all support each other. So commonly you'll see different groups of friends helping each other, um, getting together in Levine and working on projects. And so it really is a supportive um, family and it helps such a large campus feel a little bit smaller. Um, in addition, we do have three practicum courses. Each one is one credit hour and this starts off your second semester of your freshman year. Um, you typically have big projects that are semester long, but um, don't get too worried. They're not insane. Um, they're actually a lot of fun and you get to, um, again, work in smaller groups with your peers. Um, a lot of times we actually incorporate community initiatives into the projects. So I know that we've worked with um, different campus organizations to help them and strengthen them, um, get the word about them out. Um, and so it's just really great to see how you can impact your community here at UNC Charlotte while being in a class and learning as well. Um, we also have the One Honors LBST Topics course. Um, for me, that was critical thinking, and I did a lot of reading and um, a lot of discussions, and I found that really interesting because it, it really strengthened our critical thinking and our creativity. And also, we have um, an average of two honors courses per semester, but again, don't worry, they are courses that you already have to take. So as far as extracurriculars, I think that this is the best part of BHP. I think that it truly strengthens you as a person and makes you um, a well-rounded person when you're graduating and looking for a job. And really, this is what employers are looking for. So one of the things that I want to highlight is the mock interviews that we held held. Um, we have those every year and so you're able to be one-on-one -on -one with several employers and get that experience as well as just build new connections and get your name out there. We also have professional meetings um, typically twice a month and that's also nice because again you're able to hear from employers, hear what they want out of their candidates and have that interaction and it also just helps to make you a more polished person overall. Um, we also have study abroad or internship requirements, which again makes you more well rounded. For me, I chose the internship route and had one uh, the very first semester of freshman year and have been doing them ever since and it has really strengthened my resume. We also have community service and um, social events. So again, that's a great way to get to know people that might be a little bit older than you and you're not in practicum classes with them. It's a great way to build connections and find mentors who can help you throughout the process. I know some of the older BH peers that went on ahead of me were a huge help just to let me know what's coming ahead and to give me a little bit of advice so that I can be successful as I climb through the ranks of college. Um, so if you are in BHP, make sure that you are networking within the program as well as, out, as well as outside of the program. In addition, we also have leadership roles. It is a requirement for the first two years to have some type of leadership requirement. And um, it's really not stressful. You can, leadership looks different to different people. So in college, you can be in charge of a club, you can start your own club, 
really they are flexible with um, what your leadership role looks like. You just have to have an open dialogue in what you're interested in doing. And I'll take a different spin on this. I'll speak about my current experience in AHP, um, apart from these listed requirements. So um, apart from these requirements, just know the director, Dr. Emlyn, he's very lenient um, when it comes to selecting certain courses and if it needs to fit in with your schedule. So for those who enter in AHP, it's a, there's a required class, um, 2600, basically has to see all, the, all your um, fellow classmates start joining in the same honors program. Um, that same year and that same semester. But other than that, there is these additional courses that you can take that I would say are very interesting apart from the other uh, required courses that we have to take. For example, one of them is, um, I can't remember the name of it uh, from memory, but it's Honor Seminar in Theater, Churches and Temples and Neuro Performance Spaces, which is basically learning how the brain interacts in these religious spaces. And that's something very interesting for someone like me in architecture um, to learn more about this specific type of um, performance that happens in religious spaces. Apart from that, you do have to take uh, two courses of LBST honors or U-Rights or honors uh, 3700. Um, my experience with that is that they're all interesting courses. I took an honors 3700 um, that talked about immigrations and the Mediterranean Sea. So I think what these honors courses at AHP offers are very interesting classes that you may not get in your major. Um, but to give more of an experience, just know that just because it's not an AHP course does not mean that it wouldn't count. When um, I went abroad to Tokyo, Japan, and I spoke with the director that I was going and he counted one of my courses I did abroad for one of the AHP requirements. So not only did I get to just do another check mark on the list, but also got to experience the, uh, the country I went to at the same time. Um, another thing to add is the honors thesis. Um, so honors thesis, literally you have control of whatever you want. You literally just tell the, uh, the director what you wanna do, um, who are your professors that you're working with. Um, he'll try to get you some grants. I was able to get a grant this semester for my honors thesis. And it's literally a class where you do it all yourself. You come up with your own thesis, your own idea. You determine what you want to present, when you want to present. So there's that flexibility with that honors thesis. I didn't want thesis to scare anyone. And then lastly, what's really interesting about the program is that as it, we're the COAA, College of Arts and Architecture. So with AHP, you actually get to um, interact with the other students on campus in the College of Arts and Architecture. So apart from my architecture courses, only if you're an architecture major can you take them for the most part. But with AHP, you can be in dance, music, theater, um, architecture, and all the students in, in the College of Arts and Architecture can interact with one another. So I think that's the, really the, the best part about the program. Students that you typically may not interact with your, um, with your program or with your major, you are able to interact with them in the Arts and Architecture Honors Program. All right, so how do y'all apply to join one of these fantastic programs? It's a great question. Um, you go to Niner Scholars Portal. So this is where all of the scholarship opportunities um, for UNC Charlotte are gonna be located. So this is a great website to write down anyway, um, but scholarships.uncc.edu is uh, where you're gonna go. You're gonna create your Niner Scholars account information once you've uh, applied to the university. Don't wait until you get admitted to the university to apply to honors. Go ahead and start now. As soon as you submit your application um, to the university, then start thinking about scholarships and applying to the honors college. Um, so each program has a slightly different minimum GPA requirement. Uh, university honors, you have to have at least a 3.2 unweighted, unweighted high school GPA. Um, if you're coming in as a freshman or a 3.4 if you're coming in as a transfer. Um, Arts and Architectures has a uh, minimum 3.4 unweighted GPA and then Business Honors has a minimum 3.5 unweighted GPA. Um, uh, just like the university has optional uh, or you can apply for the, the test waiver um, for, um, for the fall semester or for admission for next fall, um, we are not requiring test scores um, for honors this, um, this application cycle. So if you do not have test scores or you do not have great test scores, um, we really encourage you to still apply. Um, even if, if this were a regular year, test scores are not the end all be all for us uh, with honors. Um, uh, your GPA is more important, your essay is more important, your list of activities is more important, your letters of recommendation are more important. So um, 
we really encourage you to apply, but don't um, don't let not having test scores or not having great test scores scare you off from applying. Um, I just mentioned all of these things, but we need a list of activities. We need two academic letters of recommendation, recommendation. So those need to be from people who you had as a teacher in high school. Um, and then we have one essay um, that you will write. Um, please, 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 if you're gonna spend any time on this application, please spend time on the essay. Um, it is the most important piece of the application. We wanna hear, uh, I'm gonna skip down to this bottom bullet point real quick. We want uh, to, to have students who are curious, who are wanting to make the most out of their educational experience. All three programs across the board agree on that. We want students who are going to want to push themselves and who are gonna be excited about learning, um, not just the ones who had the best test scores or the highest GPA. So really spend time on, um, on your essay because we will, um, we will really look at uh, who's put time into that, who's addressed the prompt, who is really um, emitting uh, the things that we're looking for in a student through that essay. Um, please, please, please apply before December 15th. And that is all of your app application materials have to be in. And that includes your letters of recommendation. Um, so make sure to get your um, people who are uh, submitting the recommendations for you, make sure they submit it before the 15th of December. Um, that is the priority deadline. That is your best chance of getting into any of these honors programs. Um, is December 15th. Uh, we do have an as space available pool um, if you apply after December 15th, but your, um, your odds are a lot slimmer of getting in if you uh, apply in that late pool. So make sure you get the application in before December, December 15th. You got about a month, so hop to it. Um, spend time on that essay though. Um, and we are anticipating in, in a COVID world, I take it day by day and uh, know that things can easily change. But right now we're anticipating um, uh, notifications going out in mid-February on whether or not you've been accepted to one of these programs. What questions do y'all have for us? I know that y'all have some good ones um, about the application process, about each of the three programs. We're here to answer those for you. Yeah, and if you also, um, if you have any questions for the students, uh, they are a great resource uh, to tell you more about their experience in the program. So definitely feel free to drop any questions um, for them specifically. But we do have one that just came in. Um, so these um, both actually two that we just got kind of tie in together. So um, can they use some of the same things in their admissions applications? in their honors application. So in terms of a list of activities and then those teacher recommendations, can those be used for both? Um, yes, I would also uh, use a word of caution in that if you are gonna use letters of recommendation that were used to get you into the university, it might not be the same kind of information that would be helpful for getting you into honors, it might. Um, but just make sure that your letters of rec are showing are from uh, teachers that you've had who can talk about your growth and your development and your um, participation in a class and, uh, you know, your interest in learning and that sort of thing. Um, we would love to hear about some of the other things that are going on uh, as well from your recommenders, but knowing that if all they're doing is giving a recount of what we can see on your list of activities, we'd rather hear about what, how you were acting in the classes or how you've grown or, or you know, your curiosity uh, to kind of go back to that word as well. So just um, know that you could use those things. You would have to resubmit them in the honors uh, or in the Niner Scholars portal. They do not 
go over from your admissions. If you are applying to the Levine Scholars Program and you do not become one of the semifinalists, then though that essay, which is the same, we share the same essay with Levine, um, and uh, those letters of rec can roll over into your honors college uh, application. But if it's to the university, then it would not. Well, that's a great segue into um, another question that we got that very closely ties into that, that if um, you are applying for the Levine Scholars Program and you don't get in, does that automatically consider you for the Honors College um, in one of those programs? I think you still have to make the choice as to whether or not you want the information to roll over, um, but it would be sent to you as an option. Great. Um, and this is a wonderful question that I haven't seen before. Um, so can you graduate in less than four years if you're participating in an honors program? For, I think across the board, the answer is yes, but for BHP specifically, the answer is uh, definitely. Uh, we'll work with you. We have a, a specific academic advisor that works with all of our honors students. Um, and we have students that come in and graduate early all the time. I know that we have um, a handful of students who are graduating um, from our program this fall. Um, most of them are a semester early, one student's a year and a half early. So um, it is definitely possible. It depends on the number of credit hours you're bringing in um, and just being very strategic about how you're moving around and navigating the, the honors curriculum. And that's why the honors advisors are so important because they can help you walk through that process if you let them know that's your overall goal. Great, thank you. Um, so we have a student asking uh, just to speak a little bit more on the priority decision. Um, so if they do receive um, acceptance to the Honors College and priority decision, are they obligated to accept admittance into the program um, or are they automatically a part of it? Um, just explaining that. Um, no, you are not obligated, but you're going to want to do it. Uh, so um, it's not like in, um, you're not committing to anything. Uh, it is your choice in the end whether or not you want to. Uh, so if you are applying to multiple colleges and waiting to hear uh, what they have offered uh, and then you decide you want to go in a different direction, all we ask is that you let us know that you've decided not to accept the opportunity. Great. Um, we have a student asking, so are you required to live on campus for all four years um, or required to live on campus at all if you're in an honors program? And also in um, yeah, along with this question, I think it'd be great if any of our students could speak on their experience if they lived in Levine or just living on campus in general. I can take the, the first piece and then turn it over to the students. Um, the, first, the answer to do you have to live on campus all four years is no, you don't have to live on campus any of the years. Um, but you have the op or opportunity to apply for uh, living in Levine, uh, which is the honors housing on campus. So we have some students who will live in, on campus or in Levine for several years, and we'll have students who are in honors that will never live in Levine or on campus. So um, it is open um, to whatever y'all want to do. And I actually lived in honors housing for two years. So I lived in Levine for my freshman and sophomore year. I had a wonderful experience. I think it had only been open for one semester by the time I lived there. It's beautiful, very new and nice and clean. I would say the biggest thing about living in Levine is it's really nice to be on the honors floor and to get to meet other honors students as well as just get to meet other students in general. Um, I know that there's at least one honors floor, but there are other people that live there as well. So it's nice to run into other people and make friends. It's nice to have those common areas where you can um, just hang out, do homework, they have study rooms. And it's also um, got a floor um, in the honors college where you can also go and do studying and have group meetings. They have um, specific rooms with computers and printers, which is also really nice, especially if you have to do a video interview or if you have to be on class, whatever. 
Um, it's, it's just very convenient, especially when you have an honors class in that same building, um, as well as just being able to get to and from your classes really quickly. But no, you do not have to live there at all. Um, I would recommend doing it one year just to get the experience. I think it's a good thing to do, but now I live off campus. One year I did an apartment, this year I'm in a whole house. So um, there's many options. It's really just what's best for you and what you can afford. Do any of the other students want to talk about their experience? Um, yeah, I can share. I lived in Levine my freshman year. Um, I really love Levine. Levine has a high um, amount of involvement from the people that live in there. So people tend to come out to the events that are going on in the building. They talk to everyone that lives in there. Um, so it's a super fun building to live in. It's also super close to where a lot of like the main part of campus is where a lot of classes are. Um, so that's a big plus. Um, and then we also have card access to um, like the classroom side of Levine uh, where they have the computer room and then they have two like little tiny study rooms that you can go into. Um, so if you needed a private place, that place is usually pretty quiet um, and you can go over there, um, do some work or use the computers that are in there. Um, but it's a great building to live in. It's a great experience. Um, either way, what you decide to do would be perfect though. So I lived in Levine for a year. Um, I was a transfer student, actually. I came with my associates. But um, what I really loved about Levine was just how convenient it was in terms of like where it's, its location. I had Sobeys right behind us. So you have a dining hall behind you, especially if you're in the arts and architecture honors program. You're probably like a five, six minute walk from all the basically your major courses are going to be at. So um, for me, I wanted to get the first year experience of living on campus. But also when I also saw that it was very convenient for me just to walk over my classes, that's what really um really persuaded me to, to live in Levine. Also, as Jen and also Laura mentioned, there's a lot more, there's a lot of benefits to living in, in Levine. Um, I think one thing I really took advantage of was the um, after hours card access that we have to work in the like study lounge or use the printers or use the desktops that they have um, for students. So you can act actually host um, maybe study sessions or group meetings in there. Um, so that, that's my experience living in um, Levine. My final comment would be if you're worried about being able to stay on campus during the summer, there is summer housing for interns and then also if you're going to be a summer student, you can still live in the dorms as well, so that shouldn't be a worry. Awesome, thank you all for sharing that. Um, so um, speaking of being a transfer student, so are these requirements or expectations different uh, for transfer students hoping to apply for an honors program? They're not different. It's just a matter of where you come in in the program. And if you're coming in as a transfer student who has more than 60 credit hours within the university honors program, then remember you have that advanced entry option. If you're coming in with uh, the business honors program, I know that they are really great at working with you uh, to check off uh, some of the coursework you've already had. Uh, and then arts and architecture is also very understanding and, and willing to work with you as well. So um, all of those same requirements are there. It's just that a lot of times um, some of the coursework that you've already done can count toward the requirements uh, for your curricular requirements in any of your honors programs. Yep, and business honors is the same way um, whether you are coming in as a transfer or you're bringing in AP credit for um, macroeconomics, um, if you're bringing in credit for a class that we require as an honors class, we will not make you retake that. Um, but that's basically the, the only stuff that you would get out of um, curriculum wise if you were coming in with um, those credits. Awesome, thank you. So um, we do have a student asking a little bit more about the honors essay for that application. Um, so does that have to be on something specific related to the field of study or the major they are seeking or is it more general? Go ahead, Zach. <laughs> I know for us, um, and I know that university honors is probably a very different perspective, um, but I know for business honors, uh, we definitely like to see some tie into your interest in business. 
So if you can, um, if you're interested in business honors and you want to, uh, or in, in you're applying for our program, I would recommend trying to write about uh, something that is tangentially related to business. Um, I still would recommend you writing about uh, something you're passionate about, but hopefully if you're interested in uh, being a business major, you're passionate about something in the business field. So um, definitely for business, try and write something that's somewhat business related, um, but you can take the rest. Um, yeah, I and there is a specific prompt that you are given for the application that you will uh, need to write to. Just the biggest thing is make sure you really consider that prompt and, and think about it before you just start writing or start trying to figure out a way to copy and paste from a different essay that you've already written. Uh, because we can we can tell when you've kind of copied and pasted if it doesn't, if, it, if it's not genuine or authentic to the prompt. Um, and then I will also use the opportunity to kind of promote um, that on Thursday at noon, uh, there is an, a session about applying to honors. And I talk a lot more about uh, the prompt and, and what the different programs are looking for. So you might want to tune in on Thursday at noon for that. Um, the other option or the other thing to consider when you are writing your essay is being um, demonstrating that curiosity that you have, uh, demonstrating the interests that you have, you know, if it's uh, BHP or AAHP that you're interested in, making sure that you can work that in as well. Um, but a really well thought through and grammatically correct essay uh, is a really important thing. So just make sure all the other aspects of the essay are also, uh, that you are also considering those as well, not necessarily the topic specifically. Awesome. And Denise, I know you touched on this a bit, but uh, we have a few students here just asking uh, just for some clarification. So um, if they they are students who have applied for the Levine Scholars Program and just want to clarify um, if they still want to apply for honors just in case in the event that they are not accepted to Levine, is that a separate process they need to do or are they automatically considered? It is a separate application. So if you are applying to Levine, but you also want to apply to the Honors College, uh, then thumbs up. Absolutely. Um, you will just need to submit two different applications. What I can say is that the essay prompt, uh, we share the same essay prompt between Levine and uh, the Honors College. So you can just copy and paste that because it is the same prompt. Um, and uh, Levine scholars are required to have two letters of recommendation, one of which is academic, the other which is community-based, and then there is a third optional letter of recommendation. So if you are interested in also applying for the Honors College, then just make sure that that third optional letter of recommendation is also an academic re reference. Uh, and so that way, if you want to go ahead and apply to both right now, you can. If you want to wait to see if you made the cut for semifinal, uh, and then if not, it would roll over what you've submitted versus um, in Levine Scholars versus in the Honors College, uh, that's an option as well. Um, but uh, definitely make sure that you make that decision before December 15th. Thank you. Um, so I don't see any more questions in uh, the, the Q&A feature. So definitely drop those if you do have any lingering questions. Um, but um, in the next couple minutes, if, if there's anything, uh, any final messages that uh, our panelists would like to leave with you all, um, now would probably be a good time to do so. Definitely check out all of these options uh, that are on the screen right now. So our website has a lot of really cool information. Um, we have a YouTube channel that we've been, we started this summer and we've been building and, and adding different videos to that. Um, some of those are from students, some of those are from staff. Um, and then uh, our Instagram uh, tag is there as well. 
if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out to either Zach or I. Uh, we are happy to help. Uh, we do also have Instagrams that are specific to the University Honors Program and the Business Honors Program that you can check out in addition to the overall Instagram for the Honors College. And definitely check out, I know that, that at least the Business Honors Program uh, Instagram account, and I'm sure UH piece is very similar, um, but it's it's the best way to get a glimpse of what our students are doing and uh, what it would be like to be in the program. We're we're very active on ours and are posting all kinds of the, the social events and the professional speaker meetings and things like that that our students are doing. Definitely check that out. Um, and please let us know if you have any uh, further questions, reach out to us on Instagram or email uh, through the website, uh, any of that information, and we would be uh, happy and, and excited to engage with you further. One other thing that I want to, uh, to mention is please check out the, the Honors Week schedule. Uh, we've got lots of really great things going on this week, and we've put in a lot of effort to to provide you with as much information about all of our programs as possible. If you're interested in hearing more about the business honors program specifically. Uh, we have a, uh, we had an overview about the program, a session similar to this, uh, but just about business honors um, today, but we have another one on Wednesday at two o'clock. So I'd love for y'all to join us if you're interested in business honors. And like Denise mentioned earlier, um, definitely come to our uh, mock classes. Uh, mine is going to be on, um, Wednesday at five o'clock and you're going to get to uh, discuss with me because that's how honors classes work. It's not just sit back and listen. It's you get to play an active uh, role in the conversation. So you get to discuss with me uh, corporate social responsibility. Uh, so why it's important for businesses to care about things other than profit like environment and the community and uh, things like that. So that's what we're going to talk about. So I hope to see some of y'all there. Yeah. Oh, Dante, go ahead. Yeah, I was speaking since um, I was a transfer student. I think it, regardless of which honors program to join, I would recommend to join one because um, at least with my experience, if I only stuck to the architecture classes, I would have not been a full-time student. Um, and for FAFSA requirements, um, instead of just taking random classes, not really working towards a specific goal, um, working towards an honors program, um, I thought would be more beneficial. I also, I was able to add in a minor. So I was able to work both on my honors program and a minor as well. For those who need to just get additional courses to make sure you maintain that full-time requirement. That is a great point. Thank you. Yeah, well, I believe that is all we have. I don't see any additional questions, um, but if you do have any lingering questions following our session, um, like uh, Zach and Denise said, definitely feel free to reach out and email us. Um, and we mentioned some of our honor sessions going on. We're also, I know you've gotten an opportunity to talk to some awesome students today, um, but if you wanna learn a little bit more about the students within these programs, there is gonna be a student panel on Friday. Um, so all of these events that we're hosting this week, we highly, highly encourage you all to tune into those. Um, but thank you for joining us this evening. Thank you for all your questions um, and your time. So we will hopefully see you all, um, well, see virtually, <laughs> see you all at some other events this week for honors week but thank you all so much for tuning in and have a great evening night